couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we'll learn a full fingerstyle arrangement I made especially for you guys and girls of Beauty and the Beast, or how I like to call it, the story of these two. Anyway, first I'm gonna play it for you so you can see in here how it goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick, note by note, finger position by finger position, with tabs right here on the screen, as usual. It goes like this, enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so you start with this, okay, and then you put on the F chord. So it's on the third string, and you play a slide from one to two, okay, just for an embellishment, instead of just playing, okay, you play, okay, to make it sound guitaristic. So a slide from one to two on the third string, then three, zero, two, okay, and then you put on the F chord, and you play strings six, five, and four, or just, four and six, okay, the, the F note here on the fourth string on three is what's important, so, right? And you just arpeggiate it any way you see fit, just a simple arpeggio, okay? Just a couple of notes out of the chord. Anything works here, okay? Even just this. Or if you want to know what I did, um, I did this. Which is basically lifting the bar so I can open the third string, right? For this, this is uh, F sus two. So basically, I was playing the this line, and then then I played the, the F as I showed you, and then I just played chord note chord note, and the chord I was playing is strings three, four, and six, and then. The fifth string as the note. Then I did the same with the open third string. And then I played strings three, four, five, and six. Okay, and hammered on two on the third string, zero to two. Okay, no need to bar because I'm not playing strings one and two here. So that's what I did. Okay, and then. Okay, or just. Just what I chose to play at the beginning. You can play something completely different. Okay? And play the open E string there for a second. Right? Zero one on the E 
string and then one on the B string. You can create any sort of arpeggio you like. But what's important here is to keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. No, uh, no reason to get pyrotechnical. Then you can do it again. Okay, just an arpeggio. Just pick notes out of the chord. Then you start the verse. Um, you start the verse with F still, but uh, I like to uh, dissect it and not play the barred version anymore because we need the open E string. So I put one and two on strings two and three, okay, with the thumb on one on the sixth string. Now, if this is uncomfortable for you, you can do this. Okay, and then you have the F major seven. Now, you can just uh, let go of the 6th string completely and play an F major 7 with 3 on the 4th, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you have this. Okay? But it might sound a little bit strange if you played okay, the low F note at the beginning. So uh, I suggest you do this. Okay? Pretty simple actually, one and two on strings two and three, with the thumb on the sixth string on one. And then you just arpeggiate it. So um, it's just strings three to one, and you can play the bass with the first note. Okay, and then one on the first string. Now this was a pretty complex explanation uh, for a pretty simple lick. It's just an F major seven arpeggio. But uh, there are always options when you play fingerstyle, and that's what I'm here for, to show you the options. Then you play G minor over C, okay? And here we have a couple more options. You can either put three fingers on strings two, three, and five, all on three, okay? And then you just have to be careful not to play the D string, the fourth string, and then you have the open E string, which is nice. Right? And then you arpeggiate it, and this gives you this interesting sound. Or you can bar the third fret, okay? But whatever you do, if you put three fingers on or bar the third fret, just uh, make sure that you're playing strings three and five first, okay? To get this, because this is the end of the line. Right? And then you can arpeggiate. Now, if you have the open E string, it sounds like this. And if you have the barred third fret, it sounds a little bit different. Okay? And you can also add 5-3 on the E string if you want to be bold about it. Okay? But whatever you choose to do, you need to end on C7. Okay? C7, a C chord with 3 on the third string. Okay? And you just play the chord. Okay, you can strum it if you like. Now, um, let me show you how it sounds with both options. With 3, 3, and 3 on strings 2, 3, and 5, or the barred 3rd fret. I'll show you both. Okay, or... Ah, sorry. Okay. And I also play the open 2nd string at the end there, but you don't have to. You can come up with your own style. The next line starts exactly the same way, okay, the same F line. Then you do have to bar the third fret for G minor over C again, but this time you do have to play the E string. Okay, so that's the last note of the, the line. So you play strings one, two, three, and five. Last time it was three and three on strings three and five, now it's all threes on strings one, two, three, and five. Got it? Then, again, arpeggiate however you like, and then you put on a D7 shape on 5-4-5. Five, five. And you keep the bar on. This is F7. And you just play it. So, okay, they just play the, the chord. And then, I like to do this. Okay, so it's, um, it's all harmonized. And it's all on the same frets anyway, so why not? You do the D7 shape, you play strings 1, 2, 3, and 4, you let go of the D7 shape and play 3 and 3 on strings 1 and 3, okay, so it's... Then you put on 5 and 5 again on strings 1 and 3, you slide it to 8, 
and you play that. So you get uh, five, three, five, eight. Okay? And remember the F7 is the first note. Okay? So naturally that wants to resolve itself and the next chord is D minor over A. Now you can play it like this. Okay? But this sounds a little bit dirty. So I prefer to end it here. Okay, which is a little cleaner. Okay? And this time I did write down an arpeggio on the tab. It's um, six and five on strings two and three. Okay? And I play the second string along with the fifth string. And then I play strings three, one, two. Okay? So you get this. Okay, got it? A really nice atmospheric chord with a lot of a lot of air, a lot of space inside it instead of the closed D minor. So okay? just two fingers, six and five on strings two and three, and you play strings two and five together, then three, one, two. Okay? Nothing fancy, but it does sound fancy. It's just two fingers. Okay? Economy of movement. Then um, you're still on the same position and you need to play 6-5-6 six, six on the second string and 5 on the first string. So it's... Right? And you play it with the D string okay, as your bass note. Okay? You just play the D bass string along with the first 6 on the second string. Then you put on B flat. Now, if you want to put B flat close by, you just put the bar on six, E shape, and you play okay, the sixth, fifth, and the fourth strings. Okay, because this is the note on the D string, just like the, the first one. Okay, so it's the same thing. It's okay. If this sounds a little too fat, okay, because it's fat strings, so if this sounds a little bit too fat, you can just Play uh, three, three, one on strings three, four, and five. Okay, just a B flat five chord. Okay, so you can jump it there. So this might be a little bit too fat. Okay, and this is slightly thinner sound. It's all a matter of taste. And then you have another harmonized line. This. Okay. It's uh, on strings one and three again, just like let's call a motif, the the harmonizing. Okay, so uh, that's the motif I use to harmonize. Uh, it's a sixth harmony. I have a lesson for that if you like to learn how to solo with sixth uh, harmonies. And uh, you use strings one and three, and you play six and seven, five and five, three and three, and then one and two. Okay, that's it. And that's why it's preferable to play the B flat here, okay? With the bar on six E shape, because then you're still you're still there instead of then you have to slide and just rush over. Uh, it makes almost no difference. You just have to cut the chord short by a millisecond. Um, so again, your choice. Then you put on C7 sus4, which is one on the second string with three, three, and three on strings three, four, and five. Okay, so it's one, three, three, three. Strings two to five. And then C7, okay, leading us back to the beginning of the line to F major seven. So um, again, arpeggios, any way you see fit. Mm. Thing works here. Anything. I'll, leave, I'll make it even simpler. See? Just the transition from a suspended chord to its unsuspended chord. Tension to no tension. Um, even though it's a seventh chord, but anyway. Uh, that's a new tension. That's the tension leading to the F. But again, I'm babbling theory babble and I always try to keep the theory out of things um, as much as possible because theory is boring. Let's just play. Um, then you have the F line again to the G minor over C. And we've gone over that enough. Then you do the second line again. 
And then you do the same F7 line. But when you finish on the D minor over A, you don't play it over A, you just play D minor. Okay, you play it with the D string this time. Instead of the fifth string, you play it on the D string. Okay, last time it was, it was the fifth string, it was A, now it's the natural D bass, the D string. Then you have, um, you have this again. Okay, six, five, six on the second string and five on the E string. And you have two bass notes here. You have B flat and A. Okay, six on the E string and the open fifth string. Okay, six on the sixth, open fifth. And both of them are played along with the note on six. Okay, on the second string. So it's six with B flat, then five, then six again with A. Okay, because this uh, leads us to G minor seven. Okay, a bar on three again. This time you play strings three, four, and six. So it's this. Okay, it's basically just just a cliche bass move, just going down the scale. But we have the open A string, so why not use it? Okay, instead of uh, playing something more complex finger-wise, um, it'll produce the same result anyway. So again, six, five, six on the second string. With the first six, you play B flat. I play it with my thumb. You can play a finger. You can use another finger so you can exchange. And then with the second six, you play A. And then bar three, four, G minor seven. It's strings uh, three, four, and six, all on three. Okay, just bar. And then you have... It's um, G minor over C again, so you're still barring, and this time you play strings one, two, three, and five. But you play five on the E string. Okay, so you have five, three, three, and three on the fifth string. Then you have six on the E string, then you have uh, three and five. And you can harmonize with the same frets on the third string. Okay, for the motif again. So we have... Then you can slide it down to F and just put on an F chord and play string one, two, three, and six. So that was the verse basically. Okay, so let's just go over it quickly before we start the chorus. So again, F major seven to G minor over C, then C seven. F again, then you bar for G minor over C. Then you have F7 here, okay, D7 shape on 5, okay, the harmonized line, and then D minor over A, then the, this line, this lick, with, uh, with uh, D, then B flat, okay, then you have another harmonized line, C7 sus4, C7 again. Then you play up to the F7, same thing. Then. Then it's the same D minor line, but without the A bass, so D bass instead. Then the same next line with B flat, A to G minor 7. Okay, simple arpeggio if you like, then you have the G minor over C, then F. Then the chorus, you bar for uh, the third fret again, G minor over C, and you play six on the second string, okay, and you play strings two, three, and five, okay? This is a very tensioned chord. Then you have three, five, six on the E string, so. Then you have this, A minor, simple A minor chord. It's a bar on five up to the third string, right? And you put eight on the E string. So you have eight, five, five with the open A bass. Okay, and fill it up with any arpeggio you choose to make. And then you have B flat. Now, remember this with the thumb. 
Um, I do the same thing here, right? It's um, six and seven on strings two and three with the thumb on six. Because then, when I solo, I can stretch the chord note a little bit more instead of playing. Um, unless you want to put the third finger here on the D string okay, instead of on the fifth string. But again, it's kind of the same thing. Whichever is more comfortable for you. Okay, so it's the six and seven, strings two and three, with six on the bass, either barred, okay, or with three different fingers, with two fingers here and the thumb. And then you have eight on the second string, then you slide it to 10 and play 10 on the E string. So you bar with your pinky for a moment, so. Okay, so. And then you have the same A minor. Then you have this. Right? It's B flat leading to A minor again and starts out the same way. Six, seven, and six on strings two, three, and six. Then eight on the second string. Then it's five, six on the E string and then A minor again. And then it's still A minor going down this time. Okay, it's eight, six, five on the E string, eight on the B string, and then it's D minor with six on the second string. Okay, so you can put on um, five, six, and seven on strings one, two, and three. Just start with the second string and then just arpeggiate it again, very, very simply. So, okay, any three notes will work. Um, you can repeat the second uh, string, of course. Or even create an embellishment. Okay, uh, six, eight, six, hammer on, pull off on the second string. And then you have this. Right? It's um, six, eight on the second string, five on the E string, and then six on the second string again. And you play it with A. Right? So you have this. Okay, with. A with the fifth string. And then E flat. It's um, eight, 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 and six on strings two to five. Okay, you can put it on like this, but why not double bar? It's quicker, and we don't need the E string anyway, so we don't need to do this kind of stretch there. So just double bar, just um, six on the fifth string, and just bar with your third finger on eight on strings uh, two to four. So again, and then, then E flat, and then C seven again. You can guess where this is going. Back to the verse. Um, so that was the chorus, actually. Uh, G minor over C, right, and then A minor. Page it any way you see fit. Then B flat with that slide, then A minor again. Then B flat again, A minor again, A minor still, D minor, or or any way you want. Then the A bass with E flat. Right? And then C7 again. Then you play the verse again. Now you can play the whole verse or you can just cut it short and when you reach the F7, you can go to uh, the second ending, the one with D minor, B flat, A, G minor, and then this. Now after you reach that last F, you take your pinky off and play one on the D string, okay? Still with F, this makes it F7, so. What am I picking here? I'm playing um, the chord, just F, and then when I take the pinky off, I play strings one, two, three, and four, okay, with this, okay. Then I'm playing, okay, I'm playing the chord, then the third string, then strings one and two, then the third string again, okay, chord, note, chord, note, okay, then I do the same thing with D minor. Or 
just a very simple D minor arpeggio. Again, any simple arpeggio works here. There's no reason to overcomplicate it. F, F7, D minor. Right? Again, just keep it simple and do whatever comes natural to your fingers. You don't have to uh, copy my style. Each of us have their own style, at least hopefully. And then you play this. Um, It's um, the same line as this, okay, but this time we need it soloed. So it's five on the E string, eight on the B string, five, eight on the E string. And then, okay, with B flat, with six on the second string, okay? So on the first five, you play D, and then on the second five, you play A, okay, and then you have B flat, so D, a, B flat, and then you have okay, this. Okay, it's B A B flat A again. Okay, leading back to G minor seven. Um, but if you're playing the whole chord, then you need to let it go. You need to play six on the second string, then five on the second, then six again with A, and then five on the E string, then back to G minor seven, okay, exactly the same as before, bar on three strings, six, four, and three. But even if you do this, still have to let go. You can play the open E string instead of the five, but then it creates a, a dirty chord. So there's no, no other way but just, but letting go of it because this note, uh, kind of dirtifies the B flat. So just bar it, simplest way. So, and then G minor seven. Then you have this again, okay? The same ending line, um, but instead of a G minor over C, you play the G minor bass, that's it. Okay, so strings one, two, three, and six this time with five, six, three, five on the E string with C7 at the end there, okay? You play, okay, just the five, six, okay, with strings one, two, three, and six, okay, bar on three, and you play five, six on the E string. Then you put five on the second string, okay, for C7, so you play strings one, two, three, and five. It's three, five, three, and three on the fifth string, so, and then, five on the uh, E string. So you put five with your third finger and five on the E string with your pinky and then F. And then you can either okay, play the first line or just uh, arpeggiate a series of uh, F embellishments uh, like I did in the demonstration. It's F, okay, just three on the E string that becomes add nine, then the open E string, which turns it into F major seven, just make sure you're not playing the second string. So I play strings one and three, so. And then I bar again for one, <clears throat> then um, a six or a 13, okay, F13 with a three on the second string. Okay, then um, a flat five. <clears throat> which is um, just uh, dirtying up a bit. You don't have to do it. And then, okay, then one again on the second string, barring again. So it's three zero one on the E string, then three zero one on the B string, and then then the open third string. Okay, so I lift both the bar and the second finger. And again, I play the, the string that I want to uh, embellish, then I just play a second string, um, either the fourth or the fifth. And then I put back the two on the third string and lift the pinky. The bar is still off, so I have the open fourth string now, so this becomes F6. Okay. So, um, Okay, this is the same note, this is D. So that's what I do. Uh, 
you don't have to do it. I just want to show you what I did. So again, um, F three on the E string, zero one three on the B string. Open one. Open third string. Then leaving it open, taking the pinky off, putting two on the third. Just arpeggiating strings uh, six to three. And before you go practice this, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons here. Use the playlist to find your way around. And go download the tab. The link is below in the description. And uh, it's for free. Everything is for free right here on Lick and Riff. But if you want to give something back anyway, there's a yellow donation button. And there's also a Patreon page. You can find the link uh, in the description below, um, below this video, right above the link to the tab. And um, any way you choose to support Lick and Riff, I'd be very, very grateful to you and I thank you in advance for it. Everything goes right back into making your next lessons and into working on your guitar education. So thank you very much for watching. Go enjoy this. Have fun. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next lesson.